Hello, dear friends. I am Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am a clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. I am very interested in the topic of medicinal mushrooms because it's a separate, um, I would say, field of our natural medicine. More and more scientists are researching medicinal mushrooms. They have been studied in clinical trials in Asian, in Asian countries for uh, decades already, but here uh, it's just coming. But this topic is very trending and you will understand why. So today we are talking about depression, about mood problems and uh, about um, how medicinal mushrooms can help in this situation. So we'll talk about what causes depression, what are the possible mechanisms of depression and about different mechanisms how mushrooms can help. They may contain, for example, L-tryptophan, serotonin, and uh, they can uh, inhibit their block the inflammation in the brain. They can uh, improve the neurogenesis, production of the new uh, neurons or neural cells. And they can also affect gut microbiota. So, let's talk about it in more details. Currently, uh, the most widely used theory of depression is monoamine deficiency theory. Monoamines are serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine. And according to this theory, the cause of depression is the decrease of these monoamines in the brain. And all of our modern drugs against the depression are aimed at increasing these substances in uh, the brain. Unfortunately, they work slowly. They start to work at, in approximately two to three weeks. And 30% of patients are resistant to those drugs. And also they have side effects. Medicinal mushrooms, on the other hand, uh, are producing a lot of interesting substances that are very active. And when they come to our body, they can do different effects. For example, medicinal mushrooms may have tryptophan uh, that is used by the body to produce serotonin, the hormone of happiness, meaning it will decrease those uh, serotonin in deficient patients. Second, second, mechanisms is, second mechanism is inflammation in the brain. And we know that uh, after COVID, when the people already recover, they have increased chance of developing depression. That can be connected to prolonged inflammation in the brain, it can be connected to disruption of blood-brain barrier, and we know that during COVID there is a pro-inflammatory state, meaning there are a lot of inflammatory cytokines. And this inflammation chronically can damage their brain, uh, their neural cells will die, and uh, the brain will become atrophic. Especially I'm talking about the regions that are responsible for mood. And third mechanism is neurogenic theory. The neural cells must always divide, multiply, they must grow their axons and dendrites, make the connections between each other, and uh, they must renew themselves. And if this doesn't happen, the atrophy occurs, and especially if it affects the regions of mood, uh, it may cause depression. We know that patients with long-standing depression have uh, atrophic uh, pre uh, prefrontal cortex, for example, or hippocampal area. These are mood areas. And there are neural factors, neural growth factor or brain-derived factor that will protect uh, neural cells from dying that will promote their growth, development, and development of new projections, axons, and dendrites. And we know that in depression patients, uh, these factors may be lacking. How did we come to this theory that mushrooms can help with depression? According to their investigation from 2005 to 2016, it was found out that people who are taking regularly mushrooms have less chance of developing depression. And it was also supported by previous small trials. Again, 
Let's talk about the first mechanism. Lack of serotonin. Serotonin is produced from L-tryptophan. Medicinal mushrooms may contain a tryptophan or serotonin. Not only medicinal mushrooms, but also soybeans, pumpkin seeds, kidney beans, tomatoes and some other foods. And we know that uh, this tryptophan, together with other amino acids, come to blood after we eat. And now it must cross the blood-brain barrier. But this barrier has a limited ability to let substances cross it. Think about it like a train. And all these amino acids want to get into the strain and be transported to the brain. But the seeds are limited. That's why, in comparison to the other amino acids, tryptophan is uh, not very abundant. But if we, for example, eat carbs, they will promote insulin release and insulin will help amino acids to go into the muscles, but not tryptophan. And tryptophan will increase in comparison with the other amino acids, because those amino acids will go to muscle. And then tryptophan will have more seeds in the train. Also, exercise helps with the same. And we know after exercise, our mood generally becomes better. What are the best sources of tryptophan and serotonin for, uh, among mushrooms? Uh, well, these are Pleurotus jamor. These are edible mushrooms. You see these fruiting bodies. Also, some other mushrooms may be a good source. You can pause it and watch which ones are available at your place. By the way, if we watch mycelium, mycelium may have much higher amounts of uh, tryptophan and serotonin. For example, you see again this Pleurotus jamor has four times higher concentrations if you take mycelium, not fruiting bodies. That's why for me mycelium is more promising uh, if, it's, if you are taking mushrooms with some medicinal purposes. The other thing is when you cook mushrooms, fruiting bodies, uh, some of the substances will be uh, destroyed during a thermal, thermal influence. But if you take mycelium, they, it's just dried up at 40 degrees. That's why much more uh, substances will be preserved. About 30% of patients with major depressive disorder may have a very severe disease uh, that is resistant to all the drugs and uh, that uh, they may have even suicidal thoughts. And uh, these patients need often to be treated very fast. But as I told you, all the drugs, they start working in about two weeks. And during this period, who knows what can happen. There are some rapidly active substances. I'm talking about microdosing of, uh, um, well, it's illegal. It's psilocybin, uh, the substance in, the, uh, some, in some mushrooms that are illegal in many countries. And uh, uh, they can activate the receptors in our visual cortex, visual part of the brain that will... Um, process the information coming from our eyes and make the pictures, all that we see and understanding what we see. And uh, these substances will stimulate that part and cause visual hallucinations. And um, these mushrooms are forbidden because some people may use it uh, with not very medicinal prop uh, purposes. But in general, if you do microdosing, uh, it won't cause any hallucinations, like for example LSD before and uh, it may really help with depression very fast. There are even uh, clinical trials on patients. But I'm not uh, talking too much about this, because this is uh, legal in, again, illegal in most of the countries. Next, second mechanism. A mechanism, as I told you already, it's inflammation in the brain. We know. How did we get into this theory? Why inflammation in the brain? The thing is, uh, while the patients were treated for hepatitis C infection with interferon gamma, uh, they noticed that those patients often developed depression in four months after starting treatment. And it was connected to high cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines and C-reactive protein, the markers of inflammation. Also, in the studies, also in humans, not only in animals, 
Uh, in this situation, they didn't observe uh, loss of uh, tryptophan in these people that's, uh, or animals. That means uh, the mechanism must be not what we talked about before in this situation, in, this, in the case of inflammation. Chronic inflammation may lead to loss of neurons, uh, loss of brain mass and, of course, mood disorders. Also, Alzheimer's or Parkinson's disease and dementia. We see atrophy in all these cases. And here are some anti-inflammatory mushrooms. This is shiitake mushroom. This is Inonotus oblicus or chaga. And you can see other mushrooms. For example, chaga. We see that it can protect the neural system, the neurons, from uh, oxidative stress. By the way, this uh, chaga, the parasitic mushroom living on birch trees, is uh, one of the most, one of the richest mushrooms in antioxidants because, because it has a lot of melanin and betulinic acid. Also other mushrooms. We all know Carisium erinaceus, of course, or lion's mane. This is Cordyceps militaris. This is Maitake and also Tromitis color or turkey's tail mushroom. This is Ratio lingi. And the third uh, mechanism, third theory, is, uh, as I told you, neurogenesis theory, when there is uh, not enough neurotropic, neurotrophic factors. The substances that must stimulate neurons to divide and protect them. You can read more about it in this article if you wish. First mushroom here is of course lion's mane. It is rich in arenacins. By the way, arenacins are found only in mycelium, not in the uh, fruiting body. And it can possibly cause in uh, neurogenesis, in the restoration of uh, the lost neurons, for example, in ischemic stroke, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease, and also in the de depression. And better is Mycelium is better, but don't forget that when you stimulate neural system to grow, you need to give it the substances it needs. And for example, enough uh, lipids, enough protein, sulfur, copper, vitamins group B, maybe mid-chain fatty acids, choline, lecithin, etc. One old clinical trial, one of the first maybe clinical trials, uh, that showed that even fruiting bodies after four weeks helped with depression. But again, uh, most of the studies, I have a video on depression and heresium or lion's mane, separate video on all the clinical trials against depression and anxiety, but mostly they used fruiting bodies, unfortunately. Now uh, the trends are more to mycelium, more science is done on mycelium, but before it was all on fruiting bodies. And this is on mycelium. Uh, how it helps uh, elderly people with aging, uh, hearing loss uh, due to aging. And it really can help with hearing loss. Not as trending brother of Heresium erinaceus is uh, Coralloides. Heresium Coralloides, it has other things. It has Coralloids A, B and C that promote nerve growth and brain-derived growth um, neurotrophic factors. Again, the factors that protect neural system and promote development of new neurons. Reishi also uh, increases BDNF, brain-derived neurotrophic factor. Also, it decreases inflammation in their brain. Also, other mushrooms like Tricholoma matsutake, for example. And last thing I want to tell you about is gut-brain axis. We know that the gut bacteria produce a lot of good substances like vitamins, vitamin K, um, produce short-chain fatty acids that are um, controlling the immunity in our guts, the barrier in our guts, the function of our liver, heart, pancreas, even our mood. That's why uh, microflora, microbiome is very important for normal functioning of our body. That means, for example, there is a connection between mood and inflammation in the guts and dysbiosis in the guts. When there are a lot of pro-inflammatory species in the guts and uh, lower production of short-chain fatty acids. By the way, this short-chain fatty acid producing bacteria may be enhanced by omega-3, for example, or uh, good intake of 
fiber or also Mediterranean diet. And these are mushrooms that influence a microbiome. You can see the name of the mushroom, all the effects you can see here, a lot, a lot of effects, a lot of studies. I won't pay a lot of attention to that because the lecture is already long. Also, we remember the study that uh, if we take mice with depression, take feces with microbiome from them and put it into the mice that are healthy, those mice will also develop depression. That means our mood may be really influenced by microbiome. Also, this pro-inflammatory state may cause the disruption of blood-brain barrier due to chronic inflammation. Again, toxins, toxins will in, involve and affect brain. And also there is a theory of leaky gut when uh, bacteria are absorbed, uh, go into the blood that toxins are absorbed, uh, similar uh, a lot of different symptoms and also it can cause the disruption of blood-brain barrier and uh, affect brain. Medicinal mushrooms may help to affect microbiome and to restore the um, barrier in the gut. So, dear friends, again, if we remember that there are three main uh, mechanisms of uh, depression development that the science uh, knows now. Uh, there is a deficiency of monoamines like serotonin, uh, their inflammation in the brain, also lack of uh, neurotrophic factors, and also the uh, disruption of uh, gut-brain axis. And medicinal mushrooms can help to uh, influence all these mechanisms. Of course, we need more clinical trials and I think it would be interesting for you if you watch the video about lion's mane and depression and anxiety. I hope it was interesting for you. Please share your thoughts in comments. I always read all of them. I wish you good luck. God bless you. I wish you good mood. Goodbye. Don't be afraid, doctor.